It's been one year and one day exactly since I did my last annual walk around of my Jeep Wrangler. And so today we've got a lot of time on our hands, so I thought we'd hang out in the garage, talk about everything that I've done over the last 12 months, which has been quite a bit. Should be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today in this video, we're gonna talk about my 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon that I have been modifying and off-roading and overlanding for many years. And a lot has changed since the last time we did a complete walk around. And because of world events and what's going on, I figured, you know what, let's spend some time and let's really take a deep dive into all the upgrades that I've done. Now, normally I would do this somewhere cool, up on a mountain or in a forest somewhere, uh, but because of current world events, well, we're kind of find our house and it's raining outside so we're doing it in the garage today but we've got some really good stuff to talk about so we're gonna dive in and talk about some of the pros and cons and why I've chose things and how things are working I think this should be pretty interesting let's uh, let's start talking about some of the stuff right up front all right let's start up at the front of the Jeep and there's quite a few things that are the same but there's a couple things that are new in the last year some of the stuff we haven't even talked about on the channel before so we'll be introducing that for the first time today but let's just start off with the bumper so this is the poison spider bruiser bumper and this bumper has been on at least for about two years now it's holding up well it's a steel bumper it has taken a lot of abuse in fact so much abuse that one of my sons Justin uh, rear-ended another car with it and so that's why it's got this nice little scratch here but you know what that's the great thing about a steel bumper is it holds up really well when you bang it up and bash it up but the powder coating on this has been great it's looking clean uh, just that little speck right there I probably need to sand that down and clean that up there's a little bit of rust on there uh, but the bumper has been great inside the bumper is a winch and so I had a Smitty built XRC 9500 pound winch that was that was like one of the very first things that I bought when I got the Jeep and I used the heck out of that winch for the last five years. I just installed this new XRC 9500 pound Gen 3 winch just this last month and this is the same winch that we had when we were on the Ultimate Adventure in Alaska and used the heck out of it. I have not personally used this one yet on this Jeep uh, but it is performed well when I've seen it in use when we were in Alaska. So uh, no worries about that. Uh, I, what I like about this winch is it actually has a little light here. So when it's dark, you can still see the rope moving around, which is pretty cool. Now, let's talk about lights. Uh, you guys know that I, I have a good relationship with my friends over at KC Highlights. And so I have a lot of KC Highlights on my Jeep. We'll start at the top, which is the Pro 6 light bar. That's been up there, boy, it's at least three and a half going on four years old. And I'll tell you what, one, yes, that puts out a ton of light, but it is held up really well. The powder coating on it looks still brand new. It looks great. I love that light. I love the look of it just because the round lights kind of match the round lights of the headlights, which that we should talk about. I recently upgraded these headlights and a couple of you have caught that and be like, Brad, why did you change your headlights? So I had the KC Gravity Pro lights on here before, and I just recently swapped them out for the KC Gravity headlights. And the reason I did that is because I just like the aesthetics better of the lens in these headlights. It matches a little bit better. Yes, aesthetics matter, guys. It's good to have good functional stuff, but sometimes the way things look is also nice. Now, the lights that I had before, when you turn the brights on, were much, much brighter than these ones are. Uh, but look, I'm not having any kind of shortage for lights, so it's not a problem for me. I just like the way these look and they still perform really well. Then up front here, I've got a couple of Gravity 6 Pros that are in a driving beam pattern and I've got the amber covers on here. And I like having that amber, so if we're in thick dust or snow or rain, it just helps to kind of keep some of that glare off. Uh, and what I like is you can pull these covers off if I'm out leading somewhere and I don't have to worry about that. I just want that extra light. It takes me 30 seconds to pop those covers off. And then up here, I have the G35s and these are in a fog beam pattern. And these are hooked up to the stock fog light wire loom. And there's, those are great. I use those all the time. No problems with that. Uh, what else do we need to talk about up here? The 
Factor 55 flat link that I have on here. And this thing is a couple years old and it still looks brand new. The powder coating on here is held up really well. It does help that I use soft shackles and not hard metal shackles that would tear it up. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about up here? I've got um, steering. We upgraded the steering this year. So I swapped out the stock steering box and put a heavy duty steering box in and that has made the world of difference. And plus I just have the confidence knowing that next time I'm out on the rocks, I'm not gonna break something, have anything boil over. We've had that happen out on the trail before. And then also many years ago, I installed the Yeti Steer Smarts tie rod and drag link, and those things are indestructible. I've been very happy with those over the years. Needs a little bit of a cleaning down there, but all in all, they've held up really well. I think that's it for the front of the Jeep. Let's pop the hood. Uh, there's not a whole lot to see under there, but there's a couple things that we can talk about, some challenges over the last 12 months. Now, before I pop the hood, let's talk about two things. One, let's talk about these hood latches. These are the, from Rugged Ridge. These have been on here for a long time, and these still are holding up really well. I've been very happy with them. Uh, very durable, the powder coating on them is nice, and they keep my hood from fluttering, which has been the whole reason that I installed these in the first place. I get a lot of questions about the custom trail recon decal on the side. That is from uh, a website called pixeldecals.com. You can go over there, you can have them make you a trail recon one, or you can make a custom one, whichever you like. I like that option. It's kind of fun to customize it, but this is a Rubicon version. Oh, geez. before I pop the hood, let me mention, there's a tiny little dent here. You can still barely see it, uh, but that's from when my wife borrowed my Jeep many years ago, and she parked it at a golf course, and pop, yep. Oh, boy, I forgot. So I, I have been doing a lot of cleaning of my Jeep over the last uh, week just because we've been spending so much time at home, but I have not cleaned my engine bay. It's not terrible in here, but it's not totally clean. So look, there's only a couple things that I wanna mention here. Most importantly, there's, there's one question I get asked all the time, and that is, am I running a dual battery system? And the answer is no. I just have a standard red top Optima battery. And for me, that works well. The reason I don't have a dual battery system is I don't want the weight or the complexity. I think it's a great option for some people. For what I do, having a portable battery system like a Goal Zero that I've had for a long time works really well because usually we're going from place to place to place, uh, and if I'm gonna stay somewhere Somewhere, like when we go to Baja, we stay multiple days in one spot, that portable battery system with the solar panel works really well for me. So that's why I do not have a dual battery. Now under here is mostly stock. It's the way I personally like it. We've had this conversation a few times on the channel, uh, but there have been a couple challenges this year specifically. So there are 99,792 miles on this Jeep, and a lot of those are hard miles. And this engine is held up really well for me, but there have been two things that I've had to uh, take it in for service. One was I had a rear main seal leak, so I had to go get that fixed. And the other one was uh, when I was coming home from Moab, uh, it started leaking a lot of oil. The oil cooler was leaking. And so those are two things that I've actually had to get service this year, uh, not cheap. Uh, repairs. Those were pretty expensive. And I also almost forgot to mention I just replaced my radiator like two months ago as well. But otherwise the engine holds up really well for me. The S-Pod in here, I've had that in here forever. One of the first things I installed because I knew I was going to install a lot of accessories. I did previously have two S-Pods in here, but because of a lot of the downsizing I did this year, which we'll talk about more, I actually removed one of the S-Pods. And so I'm now just running that original one that I've had. This S-Pod is five years old still holding up really well and so nice to have because it keeps everything clean. But, oh, uh, there are a couple of lights in here that I installed, some KC Cyclone lights so I can brighten things up. I like having those. Makes it easy if you're working and it's dark. Otherwise, everything else under here is stock. All right, let's talk about tire suspension and axles and all that good stuff. All right, now we're gonna jump into the meat and potatoes of this conversation. And here's where quite a few things have changed this year. But let's talk first about a couple of the things that haven't changed. Uh, up here, I'm still running the Poison Spider fenders up here, and they are aluminum, and they have been holding up really well. And I am happy with my decision to go with the standard width. I think if I would have got the wide ones, uh, I probably would have banged those up pretty good. These have taken a few scratches, uh, but if I would have got the narrow ones, boy, I would be unhappy about all the amount of mud and stuff that would be thrown up on my vehicle. So I'm pretty happy with the standard width ones, and these have held up well. I'm glad I went with aluminum and not steel because we saved a ton of weight that way. 
Something else that's not new is the lift kit. So I'm still on the Icon Vehicle Dynamics four and a half inch lift kit, and we're running coilovers in the front and then a standard shock and spring in the rear. This is a great setup for me when I was running full overland kit, when I had all the weight in here, it was the perfect setup, not having the coilover in the rear because a shock and a spring setup is just designed better to handle all that weight. But now that I'm towing the Patriot Campers trailer, it's still the perfect design. And I love that it's adjustable because when I'm towing, I'll stiffen it out a little bit, makes the ride so much better. And having the coilovers in the front, boy, it has just been a game changer for me. Having that extra down travel has been so much nicer. Plus when we're bombing through the desert a little bit, it just soaks it up really nice. So I'm very happy with my suspension. And that's pretty much all that's the same up here. There's been a lot of things that have changed. And let me just talk about the axle. So this is the Rubicon version and I did have the Dana 44 axles with the lockers, and I had beefed those axles up quite a bit. Uh, I had done sea gussets, axle shafts, uh, ball joints, and look, they just have been taking a ton of abuse over the years with the heavier tires and all the weight I was carrying, and that axle was not doing well. And so this year, we upgraded to a Dynatrack Pro Rock 44, and this is hands down my favorite upgrade that I've done to this Jeep. And that's a bold statement, I know. But honestly, if I would have known how much of a difference this axle was gonna make into the handling and the drivability of my Jeep, I would have done it a long, long time ago. I know it's a big investment, but here's the big deal. People are probably asking, what are you talking about? How does that make it any different? Well, let me tell you that they build in the caster angle into the axle. And so when you lift your Jeep, you change all that geometry. Before when I was driving, it was constant input. I was constantly putting input in the steering to keep it on the road. Ever since I installed this axle, even when I had the stock steering box before I upgraded the heavy duty steering box, it has made it so much nicer driving down the road. So just drivability has been nice. Plus just peace of mind knowing that I've got this beast of an axle up here that's gonna take a ton of abuse, no worries. It's a lot of confidence in that thing. I'm so glad I did that upgrade and I wish I would have done it a long time ago. Uh, what else is new? Well, let's talk about wheels and tires. And I know there have been a lot of questions over this last year about why I changed from a beadlock to a conventional aluminum wheel. And there's a few reasons for that, but let me just tell you what I'm running now. Right now I have the Icon Alloy compression wheels and I love the look of these things. Uh, they're really nice. They are not a beadlock, um, but they just look good and they're so much lighter than those heavy KMC beadlocks I had on there. It's actually made a world of difference in the rotating mass and the drivability of my Jeep. Now, I liked the KMC beadlocks that I had on here. They were very durable. I banged the heck out of those things. But one of the biggest challenge about a beadlock is it's not really practical when you're doing overlanding. When you're doing long distance travel, it reduces your gas mileage, your drivability a little bit, having that extra rotating mass. And then if you get a flat somewhere, good luck finding a tire shop to help you out. I mean, yeah, sure, you, I carry a full-size spare so I can swap that out, but I've been out on trips where I got a flat in the beginning of the trip and I didn't feel comfortable going the entire rest of the trip on uh, without a spare. And so that's something you have to take into consideration. Right now I can pull up to any tire shop and they will gladly take care of this. Uh, if I had a beadlock on here, not so much. It's very challenging to find somebody that will help you out with a beadlock. And oh, by the way, it's always gonna cost you a lot more. Now let's talk about tires. So I've gone through several different tires over the years and currently I am running the Milestar Patagonia MT tires and I've been very, very, very happy with these tires. What I like about them is one, uh, the price point is really nice. Two, they're very soft and so they do great on the rocks. They're very sticky and they're not too loud on the road. I've had some tires before that were pretty noisy on the road. These are, they're not as quiet as as my BFGs, but they're definitely not as loud as like the Coopers that I've run in the past. Uh, I'm very happy with them. Now, tread life on them, well, that's still to be determined. I, it is a softer compound, so I don't think I'm gonna get, you know, 50,000 miles out of these tires. But because of the price point, I think there's a little bit of compromise. You I mean, look, every tire has some give and take depending on whether it's an all-terrain or a mud terrain, whether it's a hard compound or a soft compound. There's all kinds of variables. You have to decide what's right for you. Right now, I'm pretty happy running these tires. Okay, that was an earful talking about this stuff. Let's go talk about some more cool stuff. 
All right, now let's jump to the side of the Jeep and talk about uh, one of the biggest changes that happened this year, and that is I pulled the hard top off, we got rid of the roof rack, and now I'm running a Smittybilt soft top. And this has been a pretty drastic change, but boy, we took a lot of weight off the Jeep, and it has made a big difference in gas mileage, just drivability. That drivability conversation keeps coming up because I really wanted to make the Jeep drive better, and I think I've accomplished that this year. But getting rid of that hard top was a big, you know, it was a big move. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do that. And I love the look of the soft top. I love the ability to just take it down really quick if I want to. Uh, no more rooftop tent, but that's all right. You know, I've got the trailer and, you know, I can still go old school and take a ground tent. I'm not opposed to doing that. The only thing I've had to adapt to with the soft top is the wind noise. And if I'm parking somewhere that's, well, you know, not the greatest place to be parking, I do have to worry about if somebody's gonna break in, what's inside the Jeep. So those are the kind of things I'm thinking about. Uh, but I'm not unhappy with my decision to switch to a soft top. All right, down below I have the Rocker Knocker Poison Spider uh, Rock Slider. This has been great. I've only had this Rock Slider on here for I don't know, maybe a year. Uh, I ran the stock one for a long time and I beat the heck out of those stock ones. They were great. Uh, this one's holding up well, no problems at all. It is heavy. Uh, I almost wish that I would have gone with aluminum. Maybe we'll make that transition later on. Still thinking about transitioning from steel bumpers to aluminum bumpers, but I don't know, I like these bumpers so much, I don't know if I'll ever make that transition. Then underneath the Jeep, there's a little bit of armor under there. There's an Evo transfer case skid plate that is it is beaten up pretty good. In fact, I probably need to just pull that out and uh, replace it with something else. I probably need to go full belly skid or something with maybe aluminum, some really thick aluminum. Uh, but that thing has taken some abuse. Um, it doesn't look very good anymore, but that's on me. That's just because I beat it up pretty well. And then there is an oil pan skid plate, and I don't think that thing's ever taken a hit, which is nice. That's good. You don't want to hit that. And then underneath, I've got the Adams drive shafts, and they are a 1350. And I think to go back and rewind at a time and do it over again, I would have got the 1310s. And the reason I would have got 1310s is because they're lighter. And that means my engine has to work less to spool those up. Now there's an argument for both. 1350s are stronger. Uh, and maybe if you're going to run 40s, that's a good investment. But I think for my setup with 37s, a 1310 would have been nice. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever change them because it's just nice having the strength under there. But to do it over again, I would have done 1310s. Okay. Uh, I think that's it from the side. Let's hop to the rear and talk about a couple things. All right, jump into the back of the Jeep. We've got quite a bit to talk about, but we had to open the garage door and it's pouring out rain. So I apologize if you can hear all that out there. Now, uh, let's start with the tire carrier because this is an important upgrade that you need to do if you're gonna run a 35 or larger tire. On a JK, you need to upgrade your tire carrier. So I added a TerraFlex heavy duty tire carrier a couple of years ago, and this thing holds up great. No complaints, I'm glad I did that upgrade. Down below, I've got the Poison Spider Bruiser bumper for the rear, and I did finally fill in the holes and added some rear lights in there. And I put in some KC Ambers back there. The reason I went with Ambers is because oftentimes we're out in the California desert kicking up dust. When the dust is thick, sometimes all you can see is that amber light. So that's why I have those in there. Uh, the bumper, again, just like the front one, is holding up really well, but someday, maybe, Maybe I'll switch to aluminum. Uh, also up here, I have the JWD speaker tail lights. Those tail lights are great. They've held up well. No complaints about those. I like the look of them. Uh, and then we can hop up underneath and let's talk about the rear axle. So the rear axle is still the stock Dana 44 axle. Uh, I hope to be able to upgrade that down the road, but until it's in the budget, I'm just gonna have to live with it. And we have had to make some upgrades and repairs to make sure it can handle it. So I've added chromoly axle shafts. Uh, we did uh, a diff cover on there, and it is running 488 gears. I didn't mention that earlier, but this year we did bend and break two of the control arm brackets. And so I had to have some Artec brackets, they're heavy duty brackets welded up in there. That's a little bit of peace of mind, uh, but I think, you know, eventually that whole axle has just got to go. So that's what's going on back there. Oh, underneath, uh, I did swap out the exhaust. It's a MagnaFlow exhaust system. Uh, I wanted something that wasn't going to be too loud. Uh, it 
does bring a smile to my face when I step on the gas. It's got a nice little grumble to it. Uh, but I was hoping for something that had a little more clearance. I actually thought that was going to be a pretty high clearance one. So this may stay. It may get sold on Craigslist and I may swap it out. I haven't decided yet, uh, but I am happy with the tone of the exhaust. It's pretty nice. So let's open the back door and let me show you what's going on in here. You can see that it's empty. So that big drawer system that I built, I still have. And if I end up doing a long trip, I can still put that in here very easily. But just for daily driving or for day or weekend trail trips, I don't necessarily need that. Um, and so I may put that back in here. Maybe we'll throw it in one of my other kids' Jeeps. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, a lot of work was put into that, but it's not in here anymore. And it's nice to be able to have all that space to throw bags and go to the grocery store. Uh, and back here, I do have the tailgate table and I did just do a full video on that. So you can go check that out, link in the description. Um, that's it, I think that's it for the rear. Let's hop in the interior. All right, now let's talk about the interior. And let me mention that this is the cleanest my interior has been in a long, long time. I actually spent about two hours in here just cleaning out the dirt on the vents and everything. It looks so nice in here, but I really would like to go back out on the trail and get it dirty. Uh, I'm missing the trail. Okay, there's a lot of things that are the same, but there are a few things that are missing out of the interior. And if you go watch last year's walk around video, you'll see what's not in here anymore. But let's talk about what is in here and how things are doing. So I still have the leatherseats.com, leather seats that I installed by myself, which was a fun project. And I like having leather seats. These have held up really well and they're easy to clean. Now, the only thing that I would probably change if I could go back and redo it is, these are two tones, so they're silver and black. I don't know, I think it would have been fun just to do an entire silver seat. They would just have been cool, uh, but I'm very happy with those seats. Now let's talk about the dash and we'll start with the comm. So I installed a ham radio uh, a while back and I do have my ham license, KM6 MUD. And this is the Yaesu 7900 ham radio. Uh, I love having ham, it gives you a lot of capability. And uh, the handheld mic here is on a Jeep Unique mount. And I've had this mount on here for a while and it's mounted inside the grab handle right here. And then on top of that is a rugged radio. I like having a handheld radio inside the Jeep as well because I'm hopping in and out when I'm filming or when we're spotting and being able to talk to folks from outside the Jeep that I'll have radios is nice. Uh, on the rugged radio, I have some ham frequencies that I frequently use programmed in here. It's got the race radio frequencies and now rugged radios has their own UHF channels one through 30, which you can use. So I like having that little handheld radio. It works really well for me. Up top, I have the Vector Off-Road Bar, which I've had that bar up here for a long time. I used to have a lot more stuff mounted to it, and I've taken some of that stuff off there. But what I currently have mounted to it is the 67 Designs phone mount, the best phone mount in the industry. And then I have my iPad Mini, which is using a RAM mount holder on a 67 Designs arm. Now, why do I use an iPad Mini versus one of those Garmin or uh, Magellan dedicated GPS systems? Well, I like having an iPad Mini because it allows me the versatility to use different apps, can use the internet, I can watch YouTube, you can do all kinds of stuff with an iPad Mini that you can't do with some of those dedicated GPS systems. And this works great for me, I love it. Gaia is the primary, uh, navigation app that I use, but I do use several others and I just like having that. And then up here is something I've never talked about on the channel before, and that is the OWL dash cam. And that's actually not something I ever thought that I would be installing. My wife got that for me for Christmas, two Christmases ago, and I wasn't sure about it, but I really like having the dash cam. Uh, not so much just to be able to film, you know, if an accident happens or something, but it actually has a little motion detector on there. And so if there's any kind of vibration on the exterior of the Jeep, it automatically starts recording on the outside and there's a camera that starts recording on the inside and it sends it directly to my phone. It's a really neat little dash cam. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, up here, I've got the S-Pod switches, and then on top of the soft top, we've got a little, some pockets up here for holding stuff. So not a whole lot of crazy new stuff on the interior. I've just kind of sleeked things down and downsized a little bit. It works for me. I'm very happy with what's inside here.
Now, many of you have been asking for this updated video, and I hope I answered a lot of the burning questions out there. But if you still have a question about something maybe I didn't cover in the video, let me know down in the comments below. Now, I don't know what's gonna change between now and next year, but I do know we're gonna get out and wheel the heck out of this Jeep over the next 12 months. I cannot wait to go hit some great trails this year. Now, look, I know many of you are still stuck at home like I am, and I hope you're being productive out there. Find some projects in the garage, detail your vehicle, get ready for your next trip. There's a lot of stuff you can do for when the doors open that we can go out and have some awesome trips. I hope you and your family are well, you're healthy and you're safe. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.